is Education Matters, and I'm your host, Kara Monley. And today we have a very special two-part program, Voice Yourself Part 1, with my guests, University of Hawaii School of Architecture faculty members, Kathy Hoshar and Carla Sialta. Stay tuned for Part 2 with your host, Martin Despang, on his show, Humane Architecture at 5, at his, with his special guests. Today we're going to cover an exciting Ideas and Action Festival called Building Voices, to be held on April 22nd, Earth Day, at the Hawaii State Capitol. University of Hawaii School of Architecture conceived of this unique event to promote the value of design, engage designers with the community, learn from local and global perspectives, debate complex issues about Hawaii and Hawaiian archipelago, and collect diverse ideas and collaborate on shaping an agenda for change. Phew! Oh, so welcome, Kathy and Carla. Hi, thanks Hello. for having us. Oh, we're so glad to have you about and learn more about this really exciting and important event. So tell us more about Building Voices and, and how it all was conceived and um, some of the details. Well, it started out really at the School of Architecture going to the community and asking them what were the challenges um, facing Hawaii. So we had a, a kind of listening tour where we engaged our students, our faculty, and the professional community and the community at large. Um, to ask them three big questions, and they were, what are the largest challenges facing Hawaii? Um, what do you see that Hawaii can offer to export to the rest of the world? And what were their hopes for Hawaii in the next 50 years? And from that, we gathered a smattering of challenges, issues, and opportunities that we then used to frame the symposium on April 22nd. So were the challenges relating to architecture or, bu or building or beyond broader than that? Uh, you know, we base it as a built environments discussion, but we were just asking people for their off the top of their head responses. You know, what bothers you? What mm -hmm. are you challenged by? So it could be something like traffic or too much air conditioning or not enough walkable communities. Or it could be, you know, I have, I have children and I just don't see them being able to live in this place when they grow up. You know, it's just the challenges that people face day to day. I see. Um, and I think we frame them within the context of how we as designers can then engage those problems. And right. aren't those all related to the built environment? They are. And right. so now, then what was the next step? You went ahead and you identified these challenges. Mm -hmm. And then how did the festival? Right. So we had those, those um, primary goals that you listed. Uh, and then, you know, worked within our network to gather designers from all disciplines and to gather the people not only within the design community, but the people we work with and the people we work for um, to put together a number of speaker sessions, workshops, panels um, that would all talk about those issues and problems at the state capitol in this sort of large, um, multi-format, um, multidisciplinary discourse. Okay, so I know we have a couple of slides, and this is the um, brochure, Building Voices, right. And uh, so where is it going to be at the state capitol? On the grounds? And is, it, is there a charge? It is free and open to the public, so we welcome everybody to the event. Um, we're taking over multiple levels of the capitol. So, you know, Carla will talk about we have a great exhibit that's going to take place in the open air rotunda. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then we're using the Senate and House conference rooms on the second floor for some of our breakout sessions uh, and the basement auditorium and some of the classrooms there too. So um, it's also an opportunity for people to come and visit the state capitol as one of the sort of significant pieces of architecture in Honolulu. And so it's on Earth Day, is that right? That's it week. is. It's next week, this Saturday. It is this Saturday and it was deliberately on Earth Day um, mm -hmm. to celebrate um, really the built environments. Uh, discourse has to deal with how we deal with our planetary issues. Okay, so uh, the built environment, so can you explain that a little bit more, what that means, what that term means, the built environment? I guess the, the built environment is pretty much all of the spaces that, that we have something to do with the design of. Uh -huh. uh, so it could go from literally our cities, master planning, uh, infrastructure, um, landscape architecture, it could be architecture, it could be a building, uh, it could be an interior space, it could be a small um, inhabitable space of any sort. Uh, did I say pretty yeah. much? It, it, could, it could be even be related to certain product design and certain services that are related to also architectural space or, or space in general. Right. Now, I know we have some slides. Will that help us to um, identify some of those spaces? Let's go to 
What is this? Well, this slide is really just taking a look at this is a very Hawaii-centric symposium um, and set of issues, saying that you, Hawaii's unique geographic, environmental, ecological, social, political uh, context makes us a very special place in which to deal with our built environment. All right. Um, and then our next slide. Yeah, this is a picture of, of you know, most of Honolulu and, and specifically the Waikiki Ahupua. So we have a number of workshops and sessions that look specifically at um, climate change, sea level rise, and how that's going to affect um, you know, Hawaii and Honolulu at a large scale, urban scale. Right. Okay. And I think we have a couple more slides of, oh, that's a map of Waikiki. Right, and a large part of our discussion is also connecting Hawaii specifically as a unique um, place tied to this culture, and that cultural lens being um, one way of understanding our ecology um, and our environment. And so this workshop, which is being led by WCIT, um, Rob Yopa and his team, um, will engage the idea of Waikiki, but um, within the context of a Native Hawaiian understanding. I see. And I think we have another couple more slides. Okay, what is this one? This is a magazine cover, Metropolis. Right, so you know, I think a lot of the problems go back to affordability. You know, when you're talking about affordable housing, cost of living, um, the price of food, cost of gas, transportation. Uh, so we are inviting the director, the acting director, um, Javier Vendrell from Rural Studio, which is a community design center. Um, run out of Auburn University, and they do design build with their students, and they focus on the very, very low budget, low tech um, type of architectural projects that serve the community. So at the festival then, how will, will that be part of a display and uh, you said a workshop? Um, well, Javier was the, the, the chair of the jury of the competition, so he's already involved and has already okay, been so participating. You're going to tell us about the competition now. So there was a competition as part of this festival, is that right? Yes, there was a competition. We essentially called for innovative solutions for all of these issues that Kathy was talking about um, in a way to have some visual provocations. They're only ideas. Um, visual provocations, another term. To, it's a good word, right? <laughs> it is. It's great. <laughs> to, go, to go with all this, this uh, discourse that we're going to be having on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, but but um, what I was trying to say is that Javier Vendrell has already been involved, and he's already been looking at some of the problems and some of the projects that have been submitted to the competition, and he's going to be talking a little bit about that image probably that you just saw and the projects that they're working on, okay. and also going to be introducing the winners of the competition and giving the awards. Okay. We'll talk That's a little Saturday. bit more about that after yes. the break. Yes. But so uh, who, what kind of, um, were they mostly architecture students or landscapes? Uh, what kind of... Uh, applications did you receive? Uh, so we had 111 entries. Originally, um, the registration uh, included uh, entries from people from 20 different countries. No kidding. And we have, um, I believe within the awards, there's uh, somebody from Spain. Um, there's, a, well, I'll talk a little bit about who yeah. the winners are later, but um, I think there are a lot of different ideas that are addressing some of these issues in a hybrid way. So there, we asked for prototypes that would address more than one issue. So maybe you'll see something like housing that is also addressing food, food production or growing our own food, or perhaps um, uh, an infrastructure that is also generating energy. So, so that you start to see these mixed prototypes that m we'll talk a little bit about later. Okay, but you know, um, in Hawaii, of course, affordability and homelessness is always a big issue. So, were those issues addressed in in, in the competition? There are definitely some uh, proposals for those. Yes. And how how is that? How are those issues addressed? Is in part of part of any of the other displays or talks or? Well, I guess in the talks, you know, b because the talks were shaped by the problems themselves, we have a affordable housing panel. So we're bringing together the designers and the policy makers and some of the nonprofits who deal with housing. And, and here in Hawaii? Housing. Here in Hawaii. So who yeah. are some of those speakers? Um, so we have Harrison Rue coming in from the city and county um, TOD division. We have Kevin Wilcock, who just moved here from the mainland, who did a lot of affordable housing up in San Francisco. Um, we have James Koshiba from uh, Haole Maloa Foundation. Um, and we have Jesse Wu from uh, Office of Public Housing and HUD. So we're bringing together not just designers, but all of the people right. who create the fiscal uh, and political framework. 
So, so this is a sympo This is going to be a, a symposium. The these speakers are going to be at a. Yeah. So there's there's roundtables. There's I talk see. stories. Um, and who can? So the public. I know it's open. It's free. It's, it's open. open to they the public. can come. And so, have you? Are you expecting? A lot of members of the public, are they from schools, or government, um, who, who, who can attend and who we hope to attend? anyone interested or caring about their environment can come, especially if they're interested in how designers are engaging some of these problems. Um, because I, I know there's just a lot of talk about the problem field, but not how you would visualize a solution to that. So if anybody's interested mm -hmm. in a lot of the visualization of that um, narrative, we would hope they would come. Okay, and so tell me more about how the School of Architecture itself has been. Um, I know that you've coordinated this and you've been doing all the legwork and putting it together. Are you also having um, unique University of Hawaii School of Architecture displays? And uh, if so, what are, what are they ab about? Um, we do. Go ahead. Well, you know, in addition to the <laughs> huge and monumental and awesome exhibit that's going to go up. Oh, what is uh, that exhibit? What is that yes, exhibit in the you need to talk about that. So we've been working um, on an exhibit which will display uh, some selected entries from the competition. So you're going to be able to come and see, even if you just stop by, uh, come and see some of these visual provo provocations that we've been talking about. Uh, so three-dimensional. Three-dimensional. Mm. There's a construct. So we've designed, uh, there's a series of benches. There are eight islands. There are a series of benches that could be reconstructed. They could be spaces to sit and just talk and chat. Um, they're inviting people to come and use them and sit uh, and, and just come to the table and, and open up the conversation. Uh, and then there's also some vertical displays which will hold the boards and we'll be able to use at the school for pin-up space and, and putting other students' work in the future. And we've had a crew of over 20 students working, not all of them at the same time, but there's a lot of students that have been volunteering and have been working really hard for the past two weeks on this exhibit. Uh, it's been really generating great energy at the school, and we're really excited to bring it. So it's only going to be up, though, the one day, Saturday the 22nd. It's a traveling exhibit. Um, we're hoping to launch, pre-launch uh, on Thursday, because the students are having an event at the School of Architecture. Um, we're hoping to pre-launch on Thursday. What does pre-launch mean? Well, it's for the students, so I it's see. their event. So you're going to Releasing show? Releasing it bit by bit. <laughs> because there, there are eight islands that are part of it. We're only maybe going to be uh, showing one of them. And then we're bringing all eight to the state capitol on Saturday. It's a pop-up event, so it's a pop-up exhibit. But we're hoping that it can travel to other places, so maybe you'll get a chance to see it later. Right, right. So do you already have scheduled other locations? We have some conversations, but... Okay. Nothing uh, that on, we can talk about yet. <laughs> on this island or also on the neighbor island? We would love to take it up to the yeah. neighbor islands, okay. yes. Okay. So we'll see. Maybe Great. that can happen. Well, I think we're going to go to a break. So let me remind everybody that this is Education Matters, and we're talking about a wonderful special festival. This is part one uh, of the program uh, on building voices, which is going to be at the state capitol on Saturday, the April 22nd. We'll be right back. Aloha and haoli makahiki ho, which is Happy New Year, and I hope it's a happy and prosperous new year for you. I'm Kili'i Akina with the Grassroot Institute. Every week we partner with Think Tech Hawaii and produce a program called Ehana Kako. Let's work together. We bring together movers and shakers who are making a difference here in Hawaii, making a better Hawaii for everyone. If you're interested in improving the economy, the government, and society, join us every week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m., for Ehana Kako on the Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Until you see me then, aloha. Hi, I'm Nicole Alexander Enos, and I was born three weeks ago. <laughs> Congratulations on being there for me for some of the few weeks of my life. I'm starting a new show, The Millennial Mind, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the month of April, where we'll go over some of the reasons why millennials are some of the most anxious and frustrated people at the moment. Welcome back to Education Matters with my guests, Kathy and Carla from the University of Hawaii. They're both architects and they have been instrumental in uh, setting up the new, the special festival at the university at, that's going to be at uh, State Capitol on Saturday, part of Earth Day called 
building voices. And so we just heard about some of the interesting panels and some of the interesting visual provocations that were instigated as part of a competition. So Kathy, tell us more about some of the panels and, and some of the speakers. Okay, so uh, in the morning, what we, how we tried to frame the symposium day was to take a look at the large-scale issues in the morning and then to get towards a finer grain in the afternoon and then to finish with a large closing plenary session where everyone rehashes and kind of gets to next steps and action items. Um, so in the morning, we have two panel sessions um, in addition to our keynotes. Um, one that looks at landscape and um, water-sensitive urbanism, and that mm. has a panel moderated by one of our uh, faculty members, Judith Stilgenbauer, and has a landscape architect, um, Joel Kurokawa, somebody from CTAR, the UH, Andy Kaufman, uh, Lauren Roth, Wendy Megado, um, and Daniel Spirandelli. So a collection of people who are looking at water, um, water management and resources from both academic and practice perspectives. Um, we also have a panel looking at decolonization of cities, so looking at urban design um, and how we can look at a different model for that. And again, there we have um, Konya Freitas from Hawaii Nui Akea moderating. Mm -hmm. um, and we have panel members Ramsey Tom from PBR, um, Annie Cole from Department of Urban and Regional Planning, um, and Sean Connolly, who is the founder of After Oceanic and has this great website. Um, and they're there, again, just to talk about the issues and to, to sort of give their topic um, a platform and, and a megaphone, because I don't think people, one, really understand what decolonization uh, means. Exactly. What is decolonization? Does right. that mean having people move to the I suburbs? I will let people go to the symposium <laughs> and find, find out, out what that means. Okay. Right. But, but importantly, I think mm -hmm. a, a big part of it is to not just talk about things and to have people talk about their work and ideas but to synthesize it at the end of the day. So we do have a really um, strong closing plenary panel where we've asked people across different industries and disciplines um, to come and talk about the day and to articulate how we can actually move forward. So we have Senator Donovan Dela Cruz. Good. We have uh, the Vice President for Budget and Finance for the UH, uh, Calbert Young. We have uh, Karen Umemoto from the Department of Urban and Regional Planning, uh, Kevin Miyamura and Philip White, both practicing architects in Hawaii, um, framing that dialogue. And what time do you think the closing? That is plenary? at 4.30, and that's moderated by Cam Napier from Pacific Business News. And where is that going to be at the city capitol? That downstairs? will be in the auditorium. Downstairs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, great. Um, so Carla, tell us a little bit now. We have wonderful announcements about the competition, right? We do. We, we are ready to announce the winners of the competition okay. today. Okay, I think we actually have um, some slides here. And that, the first, uh, the very first prize uh, goes to a project titled Outside House by Erin Moore, a Float Architectural Research and Design. She is um, an architect and also a professor at the University of Oregon. Ah. And um, what you're seeing here is an image uh, of one of the pavilions. Um, the project is actually two pavilions. Um, that so are, her submission was uh, this project, yes. but it included two pavilions. Yes. As so, part of the so design. there's, there's. Uh, if you come to the state capitol on Saturday, you'll be able to see a little bit more of the project oh. and some of the images. And she's actually flying in, and she's going to be here with us, answering questions and talking about uh, her projects, How which exciting. is really exciting. Yeah. Um, so anyway, to just to talk a little bit about it, this is a perfect example of creating minimum impact on the land. Um, there are two pavilions. They're less than 120 square feet. One is outdoors, which is the one you're seeing, uh, you're looking at right now in this picture. It has a deck, an outdoor kitchen, and it has a hidden outdoor shower. And there's also another one, which is an enclosed pavilion. Uh -huh. And it's, it's kind of like a, a reflection in the ways that we're living and how to put the land first. This is uh, located in a property in Maui, in upcountry Maui. And it is built, and it's the only built submission, actually, to the competition. I see. But it's only for uh, climates that can allow outdoor Correct. Living, right? Yes. Okay. So, so it's really interesting. Um, I have a little quote from, from one of the jury members. Uh, he said, the design is developed around the understanding that the home is not only our private interior space, but all the land, no matter where you live. And I think that's really beautiful. And that's hopefully what we're trying to promote. And I think that that's something to think about. Great. And then we have another slide for the next winner. 
Okay, so the second prize uh, goes to Christina Holcomb, and it is an idea for an urban market. Um, there's a series of uh, um, for another like vertical pavilions, but they're all um, spaces for growing hydroponics. It, it's next to the Kapalama Canal and next to the community um, uh, college um, mm -hmm. that is located there, and it is intended also to be an education center. And where is Christina from? Christina is a student at the School of Architecture no at the kidding. University of Hawaii. <laughs> so this is Honolulu. Yes, this is Honolulu. The and, urban uh, market is in Honolulu. Yes. That's how exciting. Very exciting. Is she almost ready to graduate? No, she's a very young student at no the School kidding. of Architecture. What a um, very honor. exciting. Yeah. Um, and then the next slide is going to be the third prize, um, which is a, a compost playground. Very, also a very interesting idea. Uh, growing parks for growing communities. And he's proposing... John Colburn is the winner. John Colburn, yes. John Colburn, who is also a University of Hawaii School of Architecture student. Wonderful. Um, they were very excited um, about this uh, event. And we had a lot of uh, students submit. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see a lot of their work uh, displayed at the exhibit on Saturday. And he has an idea for composting and not having to drive um, your compost, but maybe have it really, not having to drive your, your, your recycling really far away and using these new prototypes for composting within your own neighborhood. How and much space does that take? Uh, I don't really know how big, how, how big it is. It's a uh -huh. small pavilion, mm -hmm. uh, but his basic idea is about uh, playing, using uh, compost and the pavilion to um, educate people. Um, about recycling and composting in our resources um, and also creating a space, a public space. Okay. Um, we have um, a couple more slides, yeah. uh -huh. but the slides essentially are, are kind of telling us, it's just a teaser really because um, I invite you all to come and see these projects at the State Capitol again on Saturday. The first one is a list of honorable mentions. Um, we have a couple of them who are practicing architects here within the city of Honolulu. Uh, and some are also architecture students. And then the next slide um, is citations, because there are a lot of really interesting projects. The jury decided that they wanted to give uh, honorable mentions and also citations for ideas that were really good. Um, and you'll see another, there's a series of uh, architecture students. Um, there's um, people from uh, other community design centers. Um, and Let's see, and then there's a, 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 a firm, an architecture firm from Spain in this list. So, so all of the winners, the honorable mentions, and the citations will be displayed at the festival. That is correct. Oh, yes. how exciting. You will exciting. be able to see the images that go with these mm -hmm. words and these titles. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to say that the jur we had a really interesting jury. Um, this Who competition. was on the jury? Mm -hmm. So the competition was anonymous. Um, I was part of the organizing team, but uh, I was present at the jury, but I didn't really talk a lot. Uh, during the jury um, for confidentiality and anonymity. And we had a jury of 11 people. Four of them here uh, met at the Charlotte House. Um, Kuhao Zane, uh, Director of Design and Marketing for Zig Zane. Um, we had Healoha Johnston, which is Assistant Curator of the Arts at the Honolulu Museum of Art. Um, we had um, Joe Ferraro, which is a founding partner for Choi. Uh, and we also had Andrew Tang, um, who works for the city and county of Honolulu on projects related to transit-oriented developments, which there are a lot of also uh, in, in the proposals. Um, um, and then we had a series of people uh, abroad on Skype um, to that, that, judge. that judged the competition mm -hmm. together. So it was really interesting. It was a collaboration. Um, from different countries even. We had different time zones. and So what, what were the um, submissions all, because so many of them are three-dimensional, are they presented orally or no. all in writing? Okay. Everything is presented. For the, the competition asked for four boards, which are tabloid, 11 by 17. Um, and then you have to communicate using graphics, um, drawings. And then there was a written statement that also goes with the with the proposal. So it was what everybody interpreted from the submission. So it, that's it's really interesting. So now, having had the competition and identifying these winners, um, mm -hmm. what, what's the next step for them? What's, what's the aspiration of the symposium and the festival, having identified these um, great potential projects out there? Is there an opportunity for them to actually realize their 
We hope. I yeah. hope so. That's the, that's the hope. <laughs> that would be great. Uh -huh. Capture the imagination of the public or the design yes. community or the policy makers, um, because at all levels, uh, you know, some of these aspirational visions require some change. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the first step in mm -hmm. putting it out there and then encouraging and, mm -hmm. and publicizing that uh, this is uh, uh, an opportunity to better use our mm -hmm. built environment by these great, great pieces. And the power of designers. Right? And what the power of do, designers. Mm -hmm. What we can do as a design, what we can do to help solve problems mm -hmm. and, and make our cities more livable, um, right. I think is really important. So in general, though, what is the next step? I mean, after this festival, is it something that you're looking forward to doing on a regular basis? I know you said you might. Well, you do want it to be a, a moving um, Right, we event. want we want there to be follow through. Definitely, you know, yes. we're not we're not doing this as a as a, a one day effort that doesn't go anywhere. You know, our I think our goal is to affect change or to create some momentum for um, you know either end the, the university and our professional communities. Yeah, um, it will be really interesting at the end of the of Saturday to see what people think and and how we can actually move forward. Are there other continue. states um, that have something similar? Or other schools that put on something similar? You know, I think the symposium format is yeah. is pretty typical, but I, I think this this taking the symposium to the state capitol, really working closely with mm -hmm. members of the government and other people in the community, and then to pair it with an international competition so that it's not just people talking in stuffy rooms, but mm -hmm. there's this great exhibit with, mm -hmm. with visuals. Um, Right. makes it something somewhat different. We hope that it's something a little bit different and unique, even though there are other models that are very interesting, trying to get people involved. Right. Um, well, we just have a few more seconds, so I'm just going to have you, Kathy, look right into camera two and just remind everybody what uh, is happening on Saturday. Okay, so please, everyone, come to the State Capitol April 22nd, um, Saturday. We have events all day from 8.30 to 5.30. Um, we have the exhibit, we have many, many speakers, um, members of our community, and we would love for you to join us. Thank you. And is there a website to go to? Yes, there's a website. The official website is buildingvoices.org. Buildingvoices.org. You, you can always also go to the School of Architecture, UH Manoa. UH School yes. of Architecture. Okay, well, on that note, thank you so much, Kathy. Thank you so much, thank Carla. Thank you for having us. Congratulations you. to you and to the winners of the competition, and we look forward to everybody. Stay tuned for part two with our guest with our guest host Martin Despang not our guest host Martin Despang thank you so much and aloha